Hey guys, so today's video is going to be my 2015 beauty favorites. Please excuse the echo. I know there is a huge echo in this room. I still haven't finished setting up. I still have to put a ton of things on the walls to kind of like capture the echo so that there isn't an echo. I already put a rug, but that didn't help. By the way, AT&T is at my house right now. So if you hear people talking, it's AT&T. This is not my setup. This is not the background you are going to be seeing from now on. As you guys know, I did just move into a new home and this is not gonna be my setup. This is just the prettiest part of the room right now because my room is a disaster. I'm still putting away a ton of makeup. I'm still organizing and I really just wanted to get this video up so I just quickly turned on the camera and I decided to film it right now. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the products that blew my mind in 2015. I'm not gonna do specific categories, like I'm not gonna do primer, foundation, blush, bronzer, highlight, eyeshadow. I'm not gonna do specific categories because for example, NARS Madly Blush, I spoke about it in my 2014 favorites and it's still my all time favorite blush. Like. To me, nothing has beat madly from NARS, nothing has come close to it. So I've still been loving it this year, but it's not necessarily something I discovered or started loving this year. So these are basically products that I either discovered this year, started loving, well not this year, 2015, or they released in the past year. Let's jump into it. I discovered the best primer I have ever used in my entire life when it comes to eyeshadow and it is the MAC Prep and Prime 24 hour extended eye base. I really don't know what I was priming my eyelids with before this. That's a little bit dramatic because I still love MAC, Paint Early Paint Pot and there's a bunch of other primers that I still really like but nothing compares to this. Especially with Makeup Geek foiled eyeshadows. These make your Makeup Geek Foil eyeshadows just stick to your lid and they don't transfer to the top because sometimes, because they're so creamy, they can transfer to the top of your lid. This keeps your foiled eyeshadows in place and it's also really great with um, ColourPop eyeshadows. It's just the best, best primer. My eyeshadow lasts the entire day and it's still extremely vibrant at the end of the day. I'm gonna try to go through these products really, really quickly. I'm not gonna swatch anything either because we will be here for four hours, but I already know this video is gonna be 45 minutes long because my monthly favorites videos are 25 minutes long. So I already know. Okay, so I sat down and thought about which eyeshadow palette I used the most in this past year and it has to be my Zoeva Coco Blend palette. This is the one that impressed me the most out of all of the palettes that I got last year. I will say the Too Faced Bon Bon palette might be my favorite palette this year and this year just started. I used this palette the most out of all the other palettes I have. I just love every single shade. There isn't one shade in this palette that I don't like at all. I have used literally all of them and the best thing about this palette is that it has my ideal gold. Like this is the best gold eyeshadow I have ever used in my life. It's in this palette and I love gold. They're just really, really creamy, really, really buttery and smooth. They blend like a dream and it's just so sleek and just so easy to travel with. This palette is amazing and I don't think it gets the hype it deserves because it's fabulous. Okay, still sticking with eyeshadows, I have to give a quick mention to the Makeup Geek foiled eyeshadows because out of all of the single eyeshadows that released in 2015, the foiled shadows by Makeup Geek blew me a freaking way. This is actually a palette full of like random, random eyeshadows, but I have a lot of the foiled ones in here. And you can just tell which one a Makeup Geek foiled eyeshadow is because it has the prettiest, like, sheeny texture. It's freaking amazing. If you haven't tried the foiled shadows, they're the most pigmented, most creamiest texture. You do have to use a really good primer because they will crease, but I will say that my top baby out of all of the Makeup Geek foiled eyeshadows, it has to be Grandstand. It's a really pretty taupey, mauvey, I don't know. It's amazing. So Marlena, you did a fabulous job on the foiled eyeshadows and I just I had to give them a shout out. Okay, so if I had to talk about a single eyeshadow that I used the most this past year, it has to be my Bobbi Brown Camel eyeshadow. I use this eyeshadow in the crease of 90% of my looks. This is in my everyday makeup bag and I always, always, always grab this and throw this in my crease if I'm using warmer colors. Like if I'm doing a brown smoky eye or a gold smoky eye, which is usually the colors I go for, Bobbi Brown's Camel is without a doubt gonna be in there. I don't know how I haven't hit pan. I use this like a mad woman. God, my hair is a mess. It's honestly the best. It's like a poopy, it's like a poopy <laughs> olive yellow vomit color. 
but it's stunning in the crease. It's really, really amazing. And then I have to give a shout out to my NARS Isolde Eyeshadow Duo because this is another product that I used nonstop throughout the entire year. I also don't know how I haven't hit pan on this. When I don't know what I'm gonna do, like if I don't know what eyeshadow to do, I will throw camel in the crease and then I will apply these two eyeshadows on my eyes. And every time I use that combination, somebody asks me what's on my eyes. These are definitely my favorite eyeshadows NARS has made ever. It's amazing. You need this duo if you're into warm colors. For me, when it comes to mascara, I love a natural like bristle brush. I don't like rubber, rubber brushes at all. But my two favorite mascaras of the year are like rubber, rubber brushes. L'Oreal Telescopic Carbon Black has been hands down my favorite at the drugstore. It might be my favorite ever at the drugstore. Do I love one more than this? I don't think so. This has become my favorite drugstore mascara. It's amazing. It gives me a ton of length and a ton of volume. It's the mascara I'm wearing on my lashes right now, although you probably can't tell. To me, it's the perfect formula and it has such a tiny wand that it does both your top lashes and your bottom lashes beautifully. It's so good, I love it. And then I do have to give a mention to the Benefit Roller Lash, which is another, you know, rubber wand. It's very similar to the L'Oreal Telescopic now that I think about it, but this one keeps my curl a little bit more than the L'Oreal one does. But I still love them both equally. Benefit Roller Lash, I have been using it all freaking year. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you're probably not surprised to see this in today's video. These are eyeliners from NYX, and these are the Très, très Jolie? I can't speak French. The gel pencil liners, I have mine in brown and pitch black. These are the best freaking eyeliners I have ever used in my entire life. And that's high-end, drugstore, these NYX ones are the best. And everybody has different eyes and everybody's eyes water differently and water lines and it's always really tricky. But for me, these stay put the entire day. They go on my waterline really creamy, they don't hurt at all, and it doesn't dry too quickly, but once it sets, it sets. I actually have the brown one like on my lower lash line right now. Thank you, NYX. Thank you, because I love you and I love these. Okay, so I'm gonna throw brows into the eyes category because they're really close to the eyes. And I feel like the drugstore did it this past year. They have amazing brow products. So I really was a huge fan of the NYX brow, what is this called? The NYX micro brow pencil. It is pretty much the exact same as the Anastasia one. I have mine in brunette and I'm wearing it on my eyebrows right now and it lasts all day. I really, really love this. But what did it for me this past year was this bad boy. I never thought I would love a product as much as I love this. This is the L'Oreal, uh, what is this called? Brow Stylist Plumper. The name rubbed off on this because I use it that much. This sets my eyebrows like nothing ever has. It has like tiny little fibers in it. Kind of reminds me of the Benefit Gimme Brow, but 30 million times better. So those little fibers make your eyebrows look a little bit thicker and they just set them in place like glue. Your eyebrows don't move, people. Okay, so face products. Unfortunately, I feel like the drugstore didn't completely win my heart over in the face category. For eyes and brows, the drugstore was in it. But for me, Holy Grail products for face, unfortunately, was high-end. But I thought I would share them with you anyway because I can't lie to you guys. I never lie to you guys. I gotta show you my favorites. So in 2015, I discovered the best foundation of my entire life, and it is the Makeup Forever Face and Body Foundation. They stopped selling this in Sephora, which made me think that it was being discontinued, so I bought some backups on the Sephora website, but it's still being sold on the website, so I don't know what the deal is. But if they discontinue this, like if all my foundations suddenly disappeared and I was only able to keep one, it would be the face and body. This leaves my face flawless without looking cakey. I can put like 37 layers of this on my face, and it does not look cakey. I wore this to Fame Expo, and a ton of you guys were like, wow, your makeup looks really good, like your face doesn't look cakey whatsoever. And it's because of this. I wear this every time I'm gonna go out, every time I'm gonna have an event where I'm being like, where my photo is being taken. This looks amazing in photography. It's very, very liquidy. It's I would say it's sheer to buildable coverage because I can throw on like four layers of this, and I have like almost full coverage. It's pretty insane. But one little layer of this gives you like sheer, but beautiful coverage. My favorite way to apply this is with a flat top kabuki and I have to like 
pat it in. It takes a little bit longer because I do have to take my time with it so that I can get the best coverage, but it's amazing. I highly recommend this. I don't recommend using this with a beauty blender because this is like 50% or like 80% water. So this will just like soak up in your beauty blender, but it's the best foundation I've ever used. By the way, this is the Morphe E6 brush and it's really good. I know that this is like an everyone's yearly favorites, but day ain't lying, people, day ain't lying. The Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer, hands down the best concealer I've tried uh, this past year. I even gave away my MAC Pro Longwear concealers after discovering this. This is literally MAC Pro Longwear with a fabulous freaking applicator. Because every time I try to put on MAC Pro Longwear, even though it was my favorite concealer, it was such a mission, you know, it was really hard to pump out and then too much would come out. And it's this. So this is basically MAC Pro Longwear with a better packaging, better application. This does increase on me if I set it right away and it just looks flawless. It has really great coverage and just makes my under eyes look really nice. I'm wearing it right now underneath my eyes. The only thing that sucks is the color selection. I literally had to buy three because I could not find my color. So Urban Decay, fix the color selection, all right? So contouring was all the rage in 2015 along with highlighting. I feel like contour and highlighting was a major, a major thing in 2015. And out of all the contour... Hannah Putiga, what the hell was that? What's happening? And out of all the contouring kits I tried, the Too Faced Cocoa Contour Kit hands down is the best one I've used. Mine is shattered. <laughs> Which is scaring me a little bit. This is what it looks like on the inside. What in the world? Oh, I'm about to get really angry. I'm pretty sure at and is like freaking with my electricity, but let's move on. This is what it looks like on the inside. I've already hit pan, like major pan on the light cocoa shade. It's my favorite color in this little quad here. It has medium cocoa and dark cocoa. This is for me, the best contouring shade ever. It has like the perfect amount of coolness but not like ashy or gray where it looks really weird on your face. It's the perfect contour shade. And then Dark Cocoa is such a nice warm bronzer that you can kind of mix with this. and It's just delicious. I love Light Cocoa to put underneath my eyes to really brighten up my under eye because it's such a beautiful, like really bright vanilla shade. The only shade that is really awful in this is Pop of Light. I don't even use this because it's awful. Pop of Light sucks. I do want to talk about a different bronzer though because out of all the like single bronzers I tried in 2015, this one was my all-time favorite. This is the Girl Lactic bronzer in the shade Cabo. This is the bronzer I have on my face today. I used it to contour and to just like warm up my skin. This is really similar to Medium Cocoa in the sense that it's the perfect neutral bronzer. It has a little bit of warmth and a little bit of ashiness to it so it makes like the perfect shade. It's great for warming up the skin and contouring at the same time. And it's also amazing because it's really, really, really pigmented that you only need just a little bit and you look great. I love it. I loved a lot of bronzers this year, right? Okay, I have to talk about this because I'm pretty sure I got it at the end of 2014, but 2015 is where I really used this bad boy. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronzing Glow. This is such a pricey product but it is amazing. I've never had a product that has like two products in it where I love both equally. This is amazing. The formula is so buttery and smooth and perfect. I love it. And this highlight shade is beautiful too. I think that this is my favorite makeup item in my entire collection. Like my one makeup item, this is my favorite. I wanna give a shout out to the Fit Me Powder in the shade 135 Creamy Natural because this is what I use to set my under eye concealer most of the time because it's such a finely milled powder. Like so fine, so beautiful. It's not cakey at all, but it has like a light iridescence to it that it really brightens your under eyes. This powder is amazing. I haven't been able to find it at, in the stores anymore, like in Walgreens, so I've had to buy a backup on Amazon. But 135 Creamy Natural? You, you the bomb, you the bomb. The face primer I used nonstop this past year was the Laura Mercier Foundation Primer in Radiance. I'm almost out of this, like it's almost empty. Out of all the glowy primers I have, this one is my favorite because it almost feels like a moisturizer as well. I don't feel like I'm just putting on a liquid highlight. You know, I feel like I'm putting on a really, really 
radiant moisturizer and it makes my makeup stick to it it's just really beautiful especially for those of you who have dry skin it's fantastic i love it another primer that i used non-stop was the makeup forever step one skin equalizer in smoothing i love most of these like i love the hydrating one and the radiance one but this one in smoothing was the one that i used non-stop i love using this in combination with my makeup forever face and body it's like the perfect combination i love this this really does a great job of filling in my pores so well but it doesn't dry out my skin the benefit professional balls up on my skin the smashbox pore minimize oh that one is horrible on my dry skin this one is the only one that works really well with my dry skin i love it if you have pore issues this is for you okay so i only have two face highlights to share with you guys i loved a ton in 2015 but i narrowed it down to my two favorites of the year i used becca's champagne pop a lot in 2015. This is the one that Jaclyn Hill created in collaboration with Becca. It is amazing, and I'm not just saying that because I really do love Jaclyn, I really do love this product. It's so crazy how someone can be wearing this and I know it's champagne pop. Like, I would look at them and be like, hey girl, you're wearing champagne pop. I've done that to a few people and they're like, oh my God, yes I am. I find this product so unique. I don't know what it is about it, but I think like the peachiness with the gold makes it really unique and it's stunning and it's beautiful and really, really, really intense on the face. I love it and I used it so much this past year. The only thing I don't like is that Becca highlights are like prone to, my dreadlocks are at it again. Becca highlights are like extremely prone to breakage. What's up with that, you know? Okay, so the next highlight I have to talk about is the one I'm wearing on my face right now. It is my all time favorite highlight. If all my highlights had to disappear, and that's saying a lot, but if all of them had to disappear, and I could only keep one, it would be my Laura Mercier highlight in the shade 01. It is technically called their Matte Radiance Baked Powder in the shade 01. It's not matte. I mean, obviously. I love it so much. This is what it looks like. This is the one that I take with me to travel because I feel like it's really sturdy and like, because it's baked, I don't know, it travels really well. This is the most beautiful highlight and not because of the color, which these are the colors I tend to go for, like the pearly shades, the ones that look um, more like white on the skin, but because it's the best texture out there. If you have like mature skin or if you have a lot of acne or a lot of bumps on your cheeks and you notice like, wow, every time I highlight my face, my acne is like hella visible or like my bumps are like, really really prominent i feel like this doesn't do that because of its matte texture it's not glittery or like metallic it just gives a natural sheen if you have problematic skin and you still want to highlight i would definitely recommend checking this out and the last face product i have to give a shout out to is my tatcha luminous dewy skin mist i know that there's a lot of like you either hate this or love this i personally love this for my skin type i have very dry skin so dry that sometimes like it crusts around my nose and in between my eyebrows like it flakes off like my skin peels from the dryness it's disgusting i know but every time i spray this on my face before i go in with because that's what i usually do i spray it on my entire face and then i prime and then i apply my foundation this makes my foundation just glide on i don't have problem with dry patches i can even wear matte foundations thanks to the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist, and it's hella pricey. I purchased this, and I do not regret it. It is a super dry girl's best friend. Okay, so for the lips category, I really, really, really tried to narrow it down. You guys know, I, I feel like everybody has been saying this, but 2015 was also the year of liquid lipsticks. Like, they blew up this past year. And I have my ultimate favorite ones. If you saw my liquid lipstick video, where I talk about all the ones I own. They're actually right here. Those are my liquid lipsticks right there. I talked about all the ones that I own and the three best brands I discovered are the Dose of Colors Liquid Lipsticks, the Ofra Long Lasting Liquid Lipsticks, and Girl Lactic Liquid Lipsticks. Those three hands down have the best formula I've ever tried. And I don't wanna go into detail, like I haven't, that's why I didn't talk about like the, my ColourPop eyeshadows I created in my eyes category because I don't want this to seem like a self-promotion type of thing. So I'm not gonna talk about Havana Nights or Mammy Fever or anything like that. But besides those two, the two Ofra liquid lipsticks that I wore the most were these guys right here. And it is Sao Paulo and Rio. I also used Pasadena a lot too, but these two I used the most. In the summer, Rio was all I used. This is a really beautiful peachy liquid lipstick that doesn't get disgusting and crusty on the inner, uh, 
fantastic. And the same goes with Sao Paulo. I love it. It's a really pretty um, nude, but it's a little bit peachier. Like it's a warmer nude and I used it nonstop. This looks beautiful with like an intense smoky eye. I love the Ofra liquid lipsticks. Out of all of the Dose of Colors liquid lipsticks I own and I, I have purchased every single one of mine and I have almost all of them except like two of them. This is the best one hands down. I know you guys were probably thinking I was gonna talk about Stone, but no, I love Sand the most. And it is the weirdest shade ever. It is, it literally is the color of Sand. Like think of Sand on a beach. That's what this looks like. It is a really, really pale nude, but it's not like Mac Myth where it looks really peachy and it makes like your lips look dead. It is kind of like a light beige brown nude. I don't know, it's so weird, but it's really, 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 really light. But the reason why this blew me away was because this is the only super pale nude shade that doesn't crust up on the inner, on the inner part of my mouth. And then out of all, I love all the Girlactic liquid lip paints or what are they called? Yeah, lip paints, matte lip paints. They're all amazing. But the one that I used the most this past year was um, the shade Divine, which was formerly known as Demure. It used to be called Demure and then she changed it to Divine and then she named another one Demure. It's really, really confusing. I just love the color and it goes with so many things. Divine, you my bestie. And then I have two lip products to mention that are not liquid lipsticks, surprisingly enough. This is the Maybelline, uh, what is this? Creamy Matte Lipstick in the shade Craving Coral. Amazing. The I have this one to show you, but I just want to talk about these in general. Out of all of the lipsticks at the drugstore, this is by far my favorite formula that any brand has ever created. They are matte, but they are the most creamiest, the most comfortable matte you will ever come across in your entire freaking life. It's fabulous, the best. Maybelline Creamy Matte Lipsticks, Amazing. Out of all the lip liners I own, I used this one the most. This is the MAC Pro Longwear Lip Pencil in the shade Etc. Mine is all beat up because I used this nonstop. I saw my friend Gabby, Gabby T M U A here on YouTube. I saw her using it in a tutorial and I was like, oh, I need that lip liner. Like it, I had a moment and I needed the lip liner. I purchased it and it's my favorite MAC lip liner. And I don't hear anyone talking about it except Gabby. MAC Etc lip liner, it's a really pretty peachy brown. It's fantastic, I love it. Okay guys, so that completes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my 2015 beauty favorites. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what your all-time product this past year was. Tell me, down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye.